Hello YouTube, it's Chris. Hey, I think today's gonna be exciting. Um, hopefully not disastrous and you guys can follow along, but you know I've had my Tesla Model 3 SR Plus for about a year and a half now and I had, now have 13,000 kilometers on it. And I was reading online, Tesla actually um, recommends that you rotate your tires after 6,000 miles or say 10,000 kilometers. So I'm uh, over. So uh, first things first, I'm going to uh, rotate the tires. But also I thought while I was there, I'm going to check the brakes and re-grease the pads uh, while I have the tires off. And then something special after that, I thought while I'm doing all this work, I might as well you know, do a little bit of an upgrade as well. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, with a Tesla uh, Model 3, um, you are primarily using your regenerative braking. So the brake pads on your Model 3 will probably last the life of the car. That's not really the problem. I'm not changing pads today. The problem is that because the brakes aren't used as much, they can seize or they can get uh, corrosion on them if you're in a, a winter environment. My car has only been through one winter and we live in Vancouver and my car sleeps mostly in our garage. So it's probably been a handful uh, of times that it's been outdoors uh, overnight. So I don't expect that there's really any corrosion or any use on these brakes whatsoever, but we'll see together. Um, regardless, every year you're supposed to take the brakes apart and just grease the, um, the contact uh, points. So I've bought the uh, grease uh, and, uh, and I brought some uh, brake cleaner and we can do that job together. So anyway, uh, follow, you can follow along at home. I'll just show you some semi-specialty tools that I've um, put together to make sure this goes smoothly. So some specialty stuff to jack up your Tesla, you're gonna need a, a jack pad. And uh, this is going to sit on your jack, uh, on the car, and then allow you to jack the uh, car up. Then you need a jack that is a low profile jack. You can see that's very low. If you've got an older one, it might not, uh, be a little bit too tall to fit under the car. So I just got this guy, can't wait to try it out. And then we're gonna use a braking bar to, um, to get the tires off and a 21, 21 millimeter socket, high impact socket. And then to put it all back together, we've got a torque wrench. And all just to help us out, I've got an adapter here that will allow me to put the socket right on my drill just to save me a little bit of time removing the tires uh, and then look at this we've got a specialty box good lord what's in there so yeah look at this um, since we were taking all this stuff apart and cleaning it uh, i thought there's an opportunity to just add these um, uh, brake uh, covers caliper covers anyway um, i bought these ones from rpm out of the u.s the reason, I think there's like three companies making these, um, the exact same one, probably is one company making it. Uh, this company right here. Uh, I don't know, that, that company, but anyway, they're being sold by a bunch of different people. The reason I went with RPM is they seem to be the ones that are putting the Tesla sticker on. Now, having said that, well, now that I've got them, uh, before I put them on the car, I put a coat of wax on them just to further protect them. And this, these are really just a sticker. So I was very careful to not, you know, pull these stickers off while I was waxing them. So, uh, yeah, I mean, these things are pretty cool. They're simulating the Bembro. These are uh, rebranded Bembro brakes on the Tesla. And this is just a cover. And the reason I got these covers, is I thought, you know what, you can use these in the summer and then just take them off again in the winter, clean them, uh, polish them up, put them away for the winter, and then put them back when you change back to the summer tires. So I think this is a good idea, but I'm not sure. Uh, maybe dumb, but I think it'll look cool once we get them on the car. So anyway, three things today. Tire rotation, brake service, add these caliper covers. Pretty cool. So also, it's pretty bright outside, so I just thought I'd bring this in and show you. Um, in order to do this um, job, you need to have the all four tires um, able to spin. So we're going to put the car into tow mode because there's an electronic brake that um, is activated when you put the car in park. So we want to um, disable that and you do that through tow mode. And I'll just show you that in a second. But when you do that, you don't want the car to roll away. So then you're going to block it on either side of the tire with this. And that will allow me to jack up um, the whole side of the car swap the tires without it rolling away, hopefully. 
Uh, one other thing I guess I should mention is I'm going to use one of these uh, jack stands as well. Once I have the car jacked up, I'm going to put this under just as a little bit more security. So I'll have it lifted in two places with the jack and with um, this jack stand. And the car is very rigid, so once you jack it up, it'll bring up the whole car. So first thing we're going to have to do is put the car into tow mode. And that's required so that the rear tires are free to spin and get the um, rotor off um, when we do this service. So we'll just go into service, towing. It says use towing on a flatbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, transport mode is grayed out. Car must be in park and the brake pedal must be applied. And then it says entering press brake pedal to continue. There. I just felt the car move. And now, yeah, it's, um, it's ready to go. So we're just going to leave it like that now, and um, and then we can get uh, started taking the tires off. So really bright out here, but first things first is we just take off the covers. And then I can get my braking bar, and while the car is on the ground, I'll just um, loosen these slightly so that it makes it easier once the car is in the air. Okay, here's... I don't know if you can see under there, but there's a little round hole where this pad just sticks up in. And that's the lift position on the back. And then there's a similar position right here on the front. And that'll, that's where that goes. This one's actually not, the hole's a little bit bigger. So I'll just have to jack it up from there. Okay, well, like we suspected, uh, this car is a year and a half old, and these brakes look brand new. They've really not been used. There's no corrosion because the car lives its life indoors, basically. Um, so now I'm going to get a punch. I'm going to punch out these little retainer clips or rods, grease them, and that'll allow me to get the pads out and then grease the side. So this is the front. You can see after you know a year and a half on the road everything looks pretty brand new under here really okay so let me do that okay well i've managed to get the brakes out but you know what there's not a lot to look at here you know what after a year and a half this is all i'm going to do is basically clean this up a little bit and grease it and put it back in and the pads there's no corrosion or use at all really on these they look like brand new. So there's no rust for me to clean up. So this is what this is what I'm gonna end up putting on there. Just a little light on the um on these surfaces right here where they make contact and ride in and out. And just in the pin to make sure the pin is easy to get out. So then you don't have to look at this again for another year. But yeah, I would say there's nothing here to look at. Okay, well I got the first one on. And it looks pretty good. I got all the brake back together. That was actually almost not even worth doing. There was nothing to go on there. But I'll just show you how this works, this um, caliper cover. It's basically the exact same size as the caliper. And um, it's just got a clip that slides down in here. And one that slides down in here here and then um, you just make sure they are on tight and that you can still freely spin your your uh, brake shoe or uh, brakes uh, wheel <laughs> and that they are pushed in all the way and that's about it so looks pretty good I think and it mimics the Brembo brake that's underneath it so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap the tires and move the back to the front and before I put them back on, I'm going to clean them and put a coat of wax on them because they're easier to clean when the cars, when the tires are off the car. So let me try that and I'll put this one, then we'll be done at the front here. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to put the tire back on the car. I don't know if you can see that, but this is the back of your rim. It's just painted um, the exact same way as the car is. So there's no harm in putting, while it's off like this, put some wax on there. It's just going to help bead the water and keep any rust or corrosion from going on there so that's nice and clean again 
This car is a year and a half old. These tires look brand new, probably better than brand new now that they're waxed. Anyway, I'm gonna do the uh, put on the front now. But this looks really good. This is the kind of thing like, obviously if you take your car to a tire shop, there's no way somebody's waxing the back of your tires. Come on, give me a break. So this is always a good job to do if you're the actual car owner because you care more than they do, right? Okay, so I got the first tire back on the car and there's no scraping or anything. So that's good news. There's actually quite a lot of room. I don't know if you can see in there, it's pretty bright, but there's lots of room between the tire and there's no weight. Sometimes they say if the tire shop put weights behind your caliper that it might rub, but they haven't done that here. So I think I can torque this one down and uh, call that a day. That looks pretty good, I think. What do you guys think? Lame or cool? Anyway, I'm gonna tighten it up. Okay, now, so here's the back. And you can see again, a year and a half of use on this car. It's still really clean. Nothing really to be concerned about here. Again, our weather is pretty mild. But um, the caliper here is a different type of calendar. I've already completed the inspection on it, but this is where I think these might be better because it, it actually makes it look like the front one, right? This is a different, I think this is where you'll get a bigger change. So anyway, let me put this one. Okay, and there's the rear one. I think that looks quite a bit better. And especially once we get the tire on. So it's the same thing. Um, they've got these clips that hold on around the router. Make sure you can still spin your tire and um, wheel. And um, you can do that because, of course, we put it into tow mode, which allows it to free wheel. And then you can see they've Loctited this, so I didn't have to put any blue on there. They've already done that. And then um, on the bottom, it just clips on as well. So I think these are cool because, like I say, when you go to put your winter tires on, you can just take these things off because and clean them up and, and uh, store them over the winter. Anyway, I'm going to put the other tire on and then go around to the other side of the car. Okay, and the tire's on now. I was just going to try to show you this. There's where they were talking about putting weights. And you can see there's still lots of room between the caliper and the weight, even with the cover on. And um, lots of clearance between the caliper and the, and the uh, rim. Okay, so that's good. So I think I can now, and I think it looks great. So I'm going to um, hand tighten these. So I can put the car on the ground and then we'll re-torque them. I think it's 129 uh, foot-pounds of torque, but I'll check that. Or newton meters. Yeah, newton meters. 129 newton meters. And let me check that anyway. Don't don't quote me. Okay, so I just checked and yeah, it's 129. So just set this to um, 129 foot-pounds. And I'm going to torque it now. Torque. And uh, yeah, we should be good. All right, well look at this. I think that looks pretty good. I think it's a bit of an improvement over the other side. We'll take a look in just a second. Cool. That's the original one. And then again on the back, it's less sexy for sure. Okay, I had to move into the garage because it's just too hot outside. Holy smokes. But I just thought I would show you again. Um, this car is a year and a half old. You know what? There's there's nothing here to work on. Um, the uh, brakes look great. They've barely been used. There's no rust anywhere. So I just wanted to see because everyone's concerned sometimes. And again, your, your car may look different. Uh, this is... We're not in a... Our climate is pretty mild and I park indoors all the time anyway. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna put the next one. I probably won't bother showing you the rest. Uh, I have mud flaps here. I don't know if that helps. Um, also, I noticed that the car has some detail here. Uh, I don't know if this is to help with um, a body protection but it's the length of the car. So I don't know if all of the Model 3s came like that, but mine in 2020 did. Uh, anyway, pretty cool. Uh, I'm just gonna put this back together now and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, and there's the rear one on the passenger side. 
can see how it fits over and I think it really uh, enhances the look of that caliper for sure, right? All right, so rear tire back on, I've just hand tightened the thread and again, because we're in tow mode, we can spin the back tire by hand and just verify that nothing is scraping. And there's actually at the back a lot of room between the caliper cover and the rim. And um, then of course check along in here to make sure you don't have any weights, wheel weights that are going to um, hit the caliper either. And I, I don't think it's actually possible because they would hit the caliper before they hit the caliper cover. So you would have had a problem with weights before you even put this on. So I think that looks awesome. So I'll just leave that now and go do the front. Um, I thought of this while I was putting this all back together is that guys are probably online going, looking at this right now going, oh, look at Chris, he's cleaned the back of his bloody rim and waxed it, but he didn't even check the tire well, it was off on the car, and I have done that. I just didn't show that to you guys. But yeah, just looked at the wear. There's very little wear on this car. Again, only 13,000 kilometers, and I don't see any scalloping of tires or anything like that. So um, uh, yeah, it's fine. I, but I did do the rotation just, just in case. All right, okay, last one. Uh, this is the front passenger, and there is the uh, brake again. No corrosion, nothing to really look at here. But it's good to actually understand how this works and be able to know how to clean it yourself. And then you can take the opportunity to look at the rest of the car while all this is out. And just make sure everything looks like it's in the right place. And that it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna show you something in a second. This is, again, another reason I just found this and I'll be able to fix it while I'm under here. But anyway, I'm gonna put the cover on now. Okay, and there's the last one. You can, this is a good shot of the clip. That's how it clips on over the caliper. It fits really nice and tight. And um, there's the bottom one there. And that's it, that's what holds it on. It's nice and strong on there. There's Loctite on this screw, and that, and then that's, that's it. So, I heard somebody say that, uh, you know, that these probably wouldn't be good in winter, that they would catch snow or something like that. Mm, I can't see about that. I've heard people well, again, what I would say is I probably plan to take these off in the winter when I put my winter tires on. Why would you leave these on? They're not going to get seen and they're just going to get beat up. I'd rather put them in my garage, keep them clean, and then put them back on when you put your summers on. And then um, the other one, somebody said that it will keep brake dust off of your tire or off your rim, which I don't think that'll, I think it'll still do. I mean, look what it's doing. It's just a cap. So it's not really going to affect that. So I think it's this is a, this is not a performance upgrade. This is an aesthetic upgrade, but I think it looks cool and it gives that little flash of red on an otherwise uh, you know pretty gray looking car. Okay, so just one more thing. Um, before I put the car back down on the ground, uh, I found something and I wanted to show you guys this because sometimes you get comments from guys online that say oh war this void your warranty every time you do anything to your car everyone's so concerned about their warranty so the other way to look at that i guess in another way is to um the more you work on your car you find things that you can solve yourself so you get them long before there's damage done okay so a while ago i was in squamish uh, and uh, the road dropped off and we didn't see it and I heard the bottom of the car hit and I looked under and I couldn't see anything wrong well I just found where it hit and it's actually scraped the paint so because I've got the car up here I can actually see and I see the scrape and now I can actually clean it up a bit and just spray some uh, undercoating on it and take care of any potential uh, rust that might happen so anyway that's like I say it's a benefit of looking at your car every once in a while just to clean it and and see what you find well, I'll show you so yeah, it fell off the, you can see right here. So I looked under here, I didn't see any damage to the battery pack or anything, but look at right there, you can see where it scraped off the road and it actually scraped here a bit too. This is just a plastic cover, but this is metal. I don't know if it's aluminum or metal, but it's some sort of metal. Anyway, I've got some paint. I'm gonna tape this off and then just spray some undercoating over this and that should be fine. <laughs> Funny that it hit right where the, this is where your jack space is. So that's kind of funny, right? But uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. All right. I think that's way better. It's covered again. Happy. Uh, look, the hand show 
uh, driver screen reflects my caliper upgrade. Look at that. They're showing red calipers. Amazing. Oh, I'm just kidding. It always looks like that. Okay, well, there you go. I hope that was fun. Uh, that was a fun little Saturday. You know, um, did the recommended brake service, recommended tire rotation, and then also added a little a bit of uh, bling at the end of it there, which is really fun. I, I think they look great. So those are from um, uh, RPM, RPM Tesla aftermarket. Uh, they're in the US. I don't know anything about them. The only reason I ordered from them um, is because they put the Tesla sticker on the on the caliper uh, cover. I think you can buy it without just red or any other color actually just uh, from Amazon which might be quite a bit cheaper because I had to pay uh, import duties and taxes and brokerage fees and stuff so it, I don't know if I would do that again being from Canada but anyway I think they look great on. Uh, I'm gonna go for a little ride and just uh, test them out and um, I did torque all my tires to 129 uh, foot-pounds and uh, I will drive around a little bit and then just check and retorque them again but uh, yeah that's it I hope you guys uh, found that fun fun DI DIY do it yourself yeah DIY project okay until next time talk to you later bye